snowball. Now, Mary yeah. Sumo to activate. Take this. Ah, I hate Jesus Yamato. Church of Jesus Yamato. Slap. You realize that you realize those guys are. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Catch this. By the way, you, yeah, you heard that those motherfuckers threatened to kill me, literally end my life. Oh my God, he's still talking. What? What's new? No, what? What do you mean? What's new? Like, what's new? Oh, what's new? Oh yeah, well yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, they're always uh, trying to kill you. Why ooh, you the, the Church of the Jesus Yamato threatened to kill you, and and the Earth is Bro, still and the Earth is still, still revolving head. around the sun. Yeah, right <laughs> from your grave. Oh, watch! They'll find some way to like disarm you and everyone you know without killing anyone. How? <laughs> Fucking how even? All right, uh, that's a good intro. Welcome to the podcast, yeah. everybody. Welcome to Eyes on Cree. Oh, wait, you guys are actually oh, keeping yeah. that? Oh yeah. Yep. Eyes. Why? <laughs> Apparently, we are keeping because Eyes on Crash yeah. is the best. Yeah. All right. Uh, are we using so your good. alias, or could we just use your first name? Fuck no, use my alias, man. All right, because yeah. nobody else here is using the alias. That's what kind of podcast I want to use is my alias. pretty much. All right, right here we got uh got me of course Leon. We got Bob, aka Bob Nito. Yeah. Uh, we got Casey over here. Say what's up. Oh, hey. <laughs> A.K.A. Crimson Glory. A.K.A. Oh, I love red. Red, 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 red. red. Well, that's racist. Also, sometimes cool. <laughs> we got yeah, like Shake. Who that? What's that? And we got Wacky Mata over Yo, here. Wacky Mata 84. Yo. Of course, famous on the channel of Wacky Modder 84, known to make famous Gundam rant videos, low spec updates. What if you want to find good low spec PC games to play, what better place to watch? What better source? English words. Good advertising. Thumbs up. That's right. <laughs> so, whatever happened to the last 83 Wacky Modders? <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> and of course we have our man, our main man over here, the man is Stefan. He'll be he'll be doing little to no adding to this podcast because he's over there watching NXT right now. <laughs> yeah, this friggin' guy. He has no time for anime. He'd yep, rather watch priorities. big muscly men doing drama. <laughs> He'd rather watch the John Cena show right now. John Cena! NXT NXT is not the John Cena show. Right? Okay, I'm stupid, okay? <laughs> Look, I'm dumb. I don't know. I don't wrestling. You don't so. know wrestling. This guy thought. <laughs> Calm it down, chat. <laughs> Calm it down over there. This guy Bob thought DX was a podcast, and wow. that. But, but then what is it? That was incredible. See, he funny. doesn't know either. I can't be the only cute one here. <laughs> I can't be the only kawaii one. <laughs> okay. Well. Well, I don't know. I, I I have been surprised on many occasions just how often wrestling and like. The weebiest of anime coincide. It's basically just superheroes and supervillains beating the hell out of each other in their underwear. Like, yeah. Muscle. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say Ultimate Muscle yeah. Kaneko Man. Yeah, but that one's actually based on wrestling. That's right. I mean, I mean, we're, like we're we're going to talk about an anime about historical figures as teenage girls. Well, just one of them. Yeah. <laughs> but let's start with uh, what's everybody been keeping up with? Uh, start with the uh, with the freaking you, Casey. Oh, um, well, I've been getting Shaq to watch Gundam Double O, which somehow he hasn't done up until now. <laughs> it's amazing. Don't ask. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, before that, we were showing him Seed. That, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not, not... Hey, you get mad at me for showing you Kabuto. You go out and show him Seed. Well, if Lacka <laughs> says it's right, then... We haven't even gotten to see Destiny with him yet. He's gonna be... Because the thing is... We're using Double O as eye bleach for him. Like, he do C first, <laughs> then halfway through, you switch to Double O. When you finish that, then we do C Destiny. <laughs> really? And then there's a trail you say eye bleach. I... No, what? That's not eye bleach. That's bad. Yeah. Ouch. It just gets worse. No, no, no. no. That's an epilepsy. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah to, to clarify, Seed itself was not fun. Watching Shaq watch Seed was fun. <laughs> yeah, you say. It's like how watching you, you watch Kabuto is pretty fun. Yeah, but I can hurt you. <laughs> You say eye bleach, I say valid therapy. Point, valid point. It wasn't as fun as watching somebody watch Seed, because there's, there's so much... In Seed. Excuse me? <laughs> like, untextured <laughs> beard man. <laughs> untextured beard man, yes. <laughs> but, like, if anything, going through Kabuto for us again was more painful, because we was like, yeah, this confirms how bad this was. Yeah. <laughs> if it already didn't on the first run, this does. But this isn't about Kabuto, this is about other good things. 
Yeah. Or possibly bad things. Shaq, you been keeping up with anything by yourself? Uh, on my own, I pretty much caught up with Garo. Good. As we said, pretty much the story with, uh, of course, Double O, which, and, hey, you call that I... You, you call that eye bleach. I call that mental and, therapy. And just to clarify, he's talking about Garou. No, yeah, by, by bleach, they mean like, you know, like getting all the filth out of your eyes. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the filth out of my head so I can fucking and, forget and, that anime. And, and to clarify. Yeah, it's kind of a weird phrase, but yeah, that's pretty much what eye bleach is. Well, there's a, there's a subreddit for that, yeah. too. What? To, what? to clarify. <laughs> Literally. To clarify. Uh, no, you know, I, I believe you. Just yeah, continue. All right, to clarify, he's not talking about Garou, the live action. He's talking about the new anime that came out not yeah, too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Which is Which pretty is good. Really good. Yeah, I'll, I'll get around to that. At some and point. actually, the artist of Shaman King does it. So if you like Shaman King, you should watch this. If is you like Shaman, Shaman King, King, you'll watch it and be like, "This is Shaman King." <laughs> this is that guy because he's so different now. Yeah, it's I mean, so what? different because it harkens back to like yeah, those cat, like yeah, pretty much closer to Cash and Sins than anything yeah, else. I feel like yeah. it has kind of more of a Berserk vibe to it, only a little bit more like so bright. No one else cool. cares about wrestling. Besides, or at least, very, uh, at the very least, keep it down with your wrestling yeah. over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you see this kid over here? He's doing like freaking head gestures. Like, Arr! he's watching. It. Is... Let it, let him mark out over there in the corner. <laughs> Honestly, I'm I'm pretty Smart sure out. you know, it's Sankar the Great is better than any of these wrestlers. You missed the list though. <laughs> Good episode. Anyway, what? oh Sankar, really? which is Spanish for uh, botch <laughs> anyway, all the time. Um, the old guy got quit or fired. <laughs> Sinkar the second. So Sinkar the first was killed by Ogre, and then Wait, what? All right. <laughs> what? Ogre <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ogre. <laughs> That's a Tekken joke. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't even know where this is going. Yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, like um, Sinkar's mask. The 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 past Sinkar's oh. mask was actually magical. So uh, this isn't about say, wrestling, though, guys. Guys. I was about Hunico. Why did we bring him? Why did we bring him? Why is he here? He's derailing everything. <laughs> That's what I always do. All right, we Stefan, were... put on both your headphones and keep uh, quiet about your wrestling. Yeah, you, you, you guy. I wanted to say what animes I kept up with. All right, okay, Stefan, what'd you keep up? With? Do you want to contribute uh, now? To say, say, uh, John Cena's not an anime. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Even though he is very quiet. <laughs> Say, say, you I, 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 yeah, I think that, that I think that's good. an anime. Get to Omega already. It's good. Where? Oh, it's okay. Shit, yeah, let him finish. Him finish. Arc. What part? Oh, you you finally finished the uh, the sanctuary. Oh, I finished it up like two years ago, but I got stuck on Asgard. Ah, uh, Asgard's not good. You should have just skipped it. I, I can't. Skip. I'd skipped it, and then I don't miss anything. Yeah. yeah. I it. watched a little bit of it, and I was like. And then I was I was actively watching. I was like, "Is this important?" And then I went and looked. I was like, "Oh, it's not." Fuck it then. <laughs> uh, and then there was Durara Times Two or whatever it's called. That's good. Durara. Um, I I picked up Steel Jig. Lots of stuff. Yeah, hmm. I always pick up a lot of stuff and drop stuff. Yeah, fucking uh, who out of all of us have seen the new Saint Seiya movie? Uh, oh, man. Uh, which one, the three D? Out of all of us, yeah. I feel yeah. like yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was with you guys. Yeah. yeah, it was me, Leon, Casey, and I think Shaq. Yeah, I was yeah. there too. Yeah. Did you guys see it yet? No. It looks so nice. I wish it would have been longer. I wouldn't have mind sitting through a two hour fucking sanctuary movie. Like, but yeah. I feel this like some is this were cut, but it was really good. This is a really good well, like cursory, really, really good cursory jump into Saint Seiya. Like if you if you really just don't want to, the like, fight scenes really are good. definitely a lot more flashy. And I love fucking Disney villain ass fucking cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's the thing about it. That's just... what happened to Cancer Death Fast. Hmm. Oh my god! Like he in, like they enter his uh his fucking his temple and he like he does a fucking song and dance with all the faces uh, fucking singing and shit. What about the gates of hell? The, the fight at the gates of hell. Pretty accurate. Uh, yeah. That's that's still happening. Well, yeah, it happens. On uh, Gates of Hades. Except it's it's more like cancer gets the gets his shit washed, and instead of like it being like the an actual scene, instead of it just yeah, there's no waterfall scene either because the girl wasn't introduced because it started like directly at the beginning of the sanctuary arc, yeah, so they didn't have time so to introduce all those characters. So, but yeah, like I said, nice cursory like jump into Saint Seiya. The damn near Disney style. Off waterfalls. <laughs> Where are those fucking prayers coming from? Oh, handled it. Ah, splash. <laughs> yeah, I I never got around to watching the you know, Sanctuary arc is all is now up on fucking Crunchy on Crunchyroll, Roll. so you can watch it now. Yeah. Well, yeah, just 
any of the old stuff. I haven't gotten around to watching a lot of the classics, but yeah, just jumping right in. It was it was a beautiful movie. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, it was a really pretty looking movie. The only thing that wasn't pretty was when he put the, when say I put Sagittarius armor on. It looked dumb. I liked it. I liked the. Why is he a centaur? <laughs> he became an oh, actual was, fucking don't centaur. Care. It's okay. It's all fight scenes. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's. I guess that is the problem. There and, really wasn't much plot because they had to fit the whole freaking arc in like an hour. Yeah. So it was just really, really pretty. But like, I had no idea what was going on. It's like you were. They son. had to cram the whole arc and like the meaning like behind the arc because like all the stuff before it led up to this arc. But they had to condense it down as hard and as fast as possible. We need and they to, did a pretty good job. We need you to cram, like, 52 fucking episodes in an hour. Good luck. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, like, you should probably put something like the beginning of this video. At around this minute mark, we actually get to the point. Nah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll just wing that. it. I'll do that in the description. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll put in the times and stuff. That's what I typically do. Yeah. Yeah. No, but seriously, Casey, we really should be getting you into Gowro the animation. It's really good. And when it's done, I actually do plan on showing it to him, but that's going to be in a few weeks. Yeah, so I'll there's, there's, I downloaded the first season right, of the live right, action. It, it looks good, but there's that. already like way too much on my plate. I'll, I'll right, get to it eventually. Right, yeah. I'm going to start watching the live action one eventually, because I already have it. I figure uh, the animation might be better to watch first, because it's a prequel. Um, mm. But I mean, I, again, I'd wait till it's done. I mean, if it's, it's not done now, so no sense in worrying about it right now. It is really good, though. Just know that. I mean, what other anime are you going to watch where they're they're screaming and growling and howling armors, punching the crap out of a giant worm? I love that fucking Garo armor. (laughs) It's so good. It's so hype looking. Like, if I had the choice of any fucking Kamen Rider fucking Henshin ass armor, it's either Uh, that or the... Tokusatsu genre? Yeah, anything from the Tokusatsu. I would either choose the Garo armor... Or the Karis armor. Definitely going with the Gowro armor. Because Karis has some cool ass armor. Mm-hmm. And not Griffith also has some cool ass armor. But anyway, <laughs> Karis jokes. Let's not talk about Karis. Let's talk about. Dad. Wacky Modder 84. What have you been watching? Yeah. What, in terms of anime? Yeah. yeah. And plus, you use my name. Wacky Modder 84. We can edit it out. Good. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Uh, I've heard, of course, I've been checking out Bell Fighters Try, Gundam G Breco. <laughs> I've been rewatching. I actually just started rewatching Gurren Lagann a little bit on the side. Uh, I still gotta watch those movies. You still haven't watched the two movies? No. Nah. Damn, nah. man! What the hell's keeping you? They added like two huge major. I know they the they added like the punch up at the end with the fucking anti spiral. Yeah, and, mm. and the actual fucking super Tengen top of Gurren Lagann. But that um, fucking the lead up to that punch up, I saw I already saw that scene where he fucking out of a mech, out of a mech, out of a mech, out of a mech, out of a mech. Of a mech. It's me punch. Yeah, really. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I've also but I've out of morbid curiosity, I've been checking out Kill a Kill, which not really digging, but we're willing to give it a chance. I liked it. I liked it. it too, there yeah. is a lot of otaku pandering all over the place in that show. Yeah. Isn't that like the point though? Yeah, I know, but it, I know I it's get supposed the, to be like kind of a parody. Of I that get that, so, but maybe maybe it, maybe that, it's like uh, a little too much. It, it ends up coming full circle and just yeah, you know. like hyperdimension Neptunia. Can mm. we not talk about no, that? No, but see, <laughs> hyperdimension Neptunia started off and then kind of became that. It it became the thing it was trying to. But I feel like Kill a Kill. I, mean, I think Kill a Kill sticks to being like tongue in cheek. Sometimes it feels like it loses its way, haha. <laughs> but <laughs> it it amazing music kind of sticks to it. Yeah, and uh, I, on the side, I've also been uh, watching Log Horizon as well. Hmm. I really should be watching. Considering I've been u- I've been using Log Horizon more or less as eye bleach for myself to cleanse my mind of Sword Art Online just, forever. Then just play Dot Hack. Dot Hack, yeah, I really. already did. It's just Log Horizon is part of that. Hmm. Considering I'd rather not talk about Log Horizon. I'm like, I haven't watched. Not, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not by no means a masterpiece, but it's at least decent. I haven't watched it, but I've been hearing, like, mixed reviews. I feel like at some point in this podcast already, I've went on about Log Horizon, but I'd rather not beat a dead horse, so... I don't uh, think you have. Maybe I have. We've only done one episode. All right, well, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't keep us for too long. Basically, I feel like that show is kind of just... just nothing. It's, like, literally nothing. It takes the stakes of Trapped in an MMO out of it, where it's kind of just, like... Nothing. I don't know. Just, I didn't care for it. I thought it was really boring, and it wasn't that funny. Like, just... I'll admit, yeah, the... Wasn't the sh- that clever. The show's 
humor is very repetitive, I gotta admit. Incredibly repetitive. Yeah, it is repetitive, but <laughs> thankfully it's only repetitive in the earlier few episodes. It does die down later on. I'm like on episode 11 by now. I guess and, just uh, my whole big thing when it comes to a series is does it have high stakes? Does this situation... Oh, we could just keep respawning. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, coming later. That's later. not exactly where the drama in, in Long Horizon comes from, actually. It comes from basically the the interactions from players in the world, like mm-hmm. with each other, like adapting to this new environment. That's the main drama from the show right I think there. it's more like kind situation interesting, but I'm really not digging it. I don't know. Just, the more and more I think about right. Long Horizon, the more I'm like, I don't know if I'm ever going to watch it, but like I'm considering it and like... Doing the whole high stakes, oh, if you die, you die in real life thing has been already done, so, like... And failed. Hmm? Like, on several occasions. Yeah. And John Hack didn't really do that. It's more like you, you get hit by... A or you go into a coma or whatever. Yeah, a coma. Sorry, I liked it better when it was called Tron. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you get de-rezzed. Yeah, de So it's like, I guess taking that out... It depends on how you do it. It could be a good thing or a bad thing. I hear later on, like, they add sticks by, like, the more you die, the more you lose your memory or some shit like I that. I wanted to say that, but I, I, I thought it was a spoiler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. I mean, regardless, I mean, maybe I'll give it a more of a shot sometime. I'm just like, I saw the first few episodes and I really wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Like, yeah. I really wasn't. I see. And finally, because no one else here really wants to, I have been... Keep jabbing myself in in the side with a fork and forcing myself to cross Angie. I'm gonna start watching that too because I want to do a thing on that as well. Yeah, yeah but, but do I'm a actually been, on that. I'm, just, I'm just waiting for one of my deadbeat friends to get around and do it. <laughs> like, <laughs> because let me yeah. cross Angie. People, the funny thing about it is people have literally been saying it's actually starting to get good when in reality it's not. It's <laughs> just, I mean, I'll admit it's a little more focused than the previous episodes like from the beginning where it was just nothing but yuri all over the place then now it's not now it's just kind of maybe it's not getting good maybe it's just getting better than terrible <laughs> yeah. it's just like it, it's i just guess that's a good a way of putting it but like it went from terrible to just bad you could still like you could still have a focus and it'll still be shit yeah i mean for christ's sake the main villain whose name is embryo is voiced by <laughs> rala crusade Literally the same voice actor, and his ambitions literally mirror Rala Crusades at the same time. Yeah. And on top of that, there's this other uh, rival enemy mecha that, while Anji herself has the Vilkus, which is Strike Freedom, more or less, this bitch, which Mr. Argyle, our friend Pat, he's who pointed out looks like from, who looked almost identical from a hentai he, he knew. That bitch apparently has a mecha that is more or less infinite justice. <laughs> so, yeah, this this is more or less just Fakuda and the writer of Cross Angie going on going on a fucking dick-waving contest. I, I mean, this is kind of why I really don't want to watch this, because, so like, the art style game. itself is... Like, it, uh, the, the art style and its direction are just really? sickening like, to me. Oh, yeah. wow. It, it just... Awesome. It, Yes. Yep. The art's all right. It's just the the yeah. grossness. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 no, their their art's better than the right. Their art's pretty good. It's just you know what they're drawing. It's, yeah, it's just literally right. more of the same. If I'm gonna watch C, I'll watch fucking C. Uh, this thing looked a hell of a lot better than C. Oh, Visually, yes. at least. Not really Visually, fair to say though. Concepts are the same because C came out in like 2001, where digital animation was Three just starting. just started. Well, it came out here in 2003, but in, in Japan it was... Japan was actually 2002. But, but it just yeah, seems you like... Were, to, you were right about yeah, that. around that time around period. That time. It's around when digital animation was kind of starting and it was a little sloppy, you know, but... Um, it's not really fair to say. For that time it looked pretty good, you know. Well, considering that they... Just, like, how often they cut corners with that show... Like, more than a show made in 1979. Yeah, <laughs> you can only make so many excuses. I guess. Mm. Let's not forget the fucking AC remaster, which actually looks worse than the original. In some ways it does, but... More panty shots better. for everyone. Oh, yeah, no, awkward. that's definitely... <laughs> no, aw- some awkward I'm fucking... I'm still having between, a hard time thinking frames. if, like, that show used more stock footage than Gundam Wing. Not counting Destiny. It does. I am I mm. literally... I have analyzed the two. Gundam Wing is more on is more neck and neck with Macross 7 in terms of stock footage, but Seed... And Destiny, both of those are literally on par with Sailor Moon and Scooby Doo at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it is really that bad. Oh, oh, um, I kind of just want to see a uh, Gundam flying down infinite hallway. 
Yeah, really. Just passing by the same space tree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if that actually another, didn't happen. Wait, wait, wait. Another scene uses that same footage, but it's a blue hallway this time with a red tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. No, it's, a, it's not a tree. It's a control tower. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, at this point, is this just going to be like a separate podcast? We've gone on for like 20 minutes without getting to the point. Well, this is the intro. Yeah. yeah. 20 minutes for an intro? Yeah. 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 Also, I mean, I'm, I'm having fun here. Just this what is, is the anime from your new, your 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 lovingly uh, named new uh, top fucking Mary Sue, Gary what? Stu, whatever. Oh, you mean Mahoka Koko no Ratose, The anime oh my god, that's, that's, that's not a real word. No, <laughs> where's the word? Okay, excuse me. English. Okay, <laughs> excuse me. I will translate it to your non weeable language. The, yeah, it's called your, English. The irregular at Magic High School. That is the English Oh, oh don't <laughs> watch that! <laughs> okay, stop! Okay, and, and immediately. Alright, that, that is English, about. but that wasn't grammatically Ew. correct, but go on. That immediately oh. Bob knows what I'm talking about, so clearly I'm just he's. I'm gonna stay of it. out of this now. Clearly he's heard of it! <laughs> I'm gonna stay out of What's the Japanese so. name again? <laughs> Mahoka Koko Naruto. I watched the first episode of that, that and like the second pool. that I did, I was like, no! Yeah, no! Hey, no! Alright, explain to us about Mahoka. Magical Coconut High School. I really <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it from now, that from now on. Alright, so let's get to the premise. What's it about? Now, honestly, oh. it's just, to be honest, oh. it's hard to really sum it up because the way oh, it, it presents its story is. With the exception of Tatsuya, the main character himself, everything else around him is just exposition all over the place. That honestly doesn't even make much sense. Like, like Tatsuya is this, this like, basically, for lack of better words, the god of this, his world he's in. He, he invents all sorts of new magical... T- the thing about that is, in that universe, magic and technology are kind of synonymous at that point. Okay. Where they literally have these devices called CADs, which can, like, do, do all sorts of, like, which more or less can be programmed yes. for all sorts of magical types of, of uses. And Tatsuya is more or less, like, the Jesus of that world, which he literally ends up creating the power of flight in, uh, about a third of the way through. But my point is, he, every, this motherfucker is... The worst, I, I mean, I don't know Shadow used to be on top for now, but no, this motherfucker kicks, like, drop kicks Shadow in the face. So in he of fell through the planet's atmosphere and survived? Yes. No, literally, the thing is, Tatsuya... <laughs> to be fair, Shadow the Hedgehog did that too. The thing about that is, <laughs> literally, anyone associated or is in proximity of Tatsuya cannot die. If you die, from, if you are murdered, if you die of natural causes, he will revive you immediately. You have eternal life as long as you are associated with him. And on top of that, every woman in like a fucking 10 kilometer radius wants his dick. Like even literally, even pe- like for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, most especially his sister, my ass say, yeah, who, go, calls go him, who calls him by the words Onisama. Not on- which disgusts me way more than just Onichan. Because it's like she, like the bitch worships the fucking ground he walks I'm on. So and on top of Hello, that, big dick OG brother. <laughs> oh, Nietzsche! No, 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 but that's the thing. In, in the second episode alone, two girls who are not even related to him call him Onisama. Just because his he, they hear his sister calling him that. And he, and Tatsuya <laughs> says like, dude... Don't call me that. Why are you talking? Why are you calling me that? I don't even remember but that. literally, whenever his friends are walking down the street with him, all they do is just praise the ground he works on. He rocks on, and literally, they hype this motherfucker up with this villain who looks ninety-five percent verbatim to Suzaku from Code Geass with red hair. <laughs> oh, no. And literally, what does Tatsuya do? He beats him with the snap of his fingers. One hit. Wow. That- that, that it sounds... is one of the most anticlimactic things I've ever fucking seen, That's... and it's a slap in the face to my intelligence. How do they stretch that out for, like, more than one episode? Good That's question! You might want to ask them about that, because really... <laughs> like, this sounds like a lot less of, like, a, a, a mech anime or any kind of anime that I've... Just yeah. like it sounds more like a harem than anything else. Oh no, no, Bob more... is just sitting over here having fucking is, PTSD yeah, flashbacks is, about this shit. But my point is, I yeah, mean, this... go, well, going by this. You know what's at stake here? It sounds like a non-comedy version of the Fairly Odd Parents. No, dude, trust me. You, are, you, this is an anime you have to see to believe. Let take every cliche, every form of bad writing you could possibly think of, 
and merge it into one anime. Like, literally, it is all there. And Tatsuya has all of it revolving around him like a black hole for bad writing. This really does well, sound like a like a comedy. If he it's wished for it, though. Timmy Turner could have that, too. I know, it sounds like it would be a fantastic anti-classic, but it's not. It's, it really is. This isn't Valbreak the Liberator, okay? This is re- this is some legit bad shit here. Are you, Are you done having some PTSD? Do you like the show? Well, oh, you're, you're a pretty big fan base, aren't you? <laughs> Why are you that big? Stop liking the show. It's. I'm not. Did I say I was liking Stop, the show? Stop. No. He's talking to people who actually do like. Why do show. you like this show? Oh, uh, why do you? <laughs> why do you like this? Sh- Stop. Wait, Just wait, turn wait, are you talking to the viewers? Stop it. Wait, they can Bob. hear us. They can. Yes, they can. Oh, shit, Bob. people are listening to us. Bob. Stop. 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 What exactly serious. do you think that is right in front of you right now? We're done talking about this show. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't look like anything. You kids better it stop watching look- the show <laughs> before I give you an angry letter. You don't want that in your mailbox. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna tell <laughs> I'm gonna tell the principal <laughs> on you. I'm the principal saying, will he's know. Implying, like, the, the tone of- no, see. he's implying that he's literally gonna write them a really stern letter. A stern letter. <laughs> the principal will see your letter, and you will you will get suspended for a day <laughs> for watching a terrible, terrible show. Stop it! Just stop what you're doing. No, nobody, no incest, no more. Just stop, please. Oh, Thanks. I thought you were talking about this show. No, it is. No, Mahoka. Yeah. Ha- that's oh. all it is, basically. It's- no, no, no. I mean, like he was talking about this podcast. And how terrible it is. Oh. No, he's talking <laughs> Wacky Modder eighty four. You almost caught yourself on this show. He's talk. He's talking uh. about. He's talking about Matt. Stop saying his name. <laughs> You're giving me more work to do. Yeah, give him. Yeah, give sorry. Him. Sake. Even Why though there's a bajillion people named that. Well, the Krabby Patty world. secret formula is... Yeah, really. Oh, oh shit, take that out! <laughs> shit. Fucking Krusty Krab right. Incorporated will sue us for fucking away from Malka. Alright, enough, enough magical coconut high school. Let's yeah. get into the main event. <laughs> yeah, main event. Yeah. Fade Zero. Stay oh, that tuned. Yeah. 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 And yeah. transition. We watched all of Fate Zero. Took us a while, but we finally did it. <laughs> yeah, it took us longer than a while because Kabuto. Yeah. Well, whose fault is that? <laughs> yeah, Bob. Not my fault. <laughs> if that's what you thinking, would like to say. Yeah, watch your wrestling. Fam. Fam. Fatimus. Wait, yeah. do, do, do real people actually say that? Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Just me. I still say word. <laughs> word. Anyway, word. Wait, hold on. Are we still using like that guy's alias? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, so uh, oh, wait. So he. Oh, you're gonna have to censor that out too. So we have like we have like two reverse secret identities going on here. This is getting confusing. This title shall be named censorship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from this one on, you will address me as ceviche. <laughs> <laughs> so got- ceviche about phase zero. <laughs> Fate Zero. Oh, uh, yeah, so about Fate Zero, I received this nickname when my friend got drunk one time and he hallucinated that his cat was calling me that. <laughs> and Bob uh, Zero is the name of the sprite sheet that I made yesterday and I recolored Knuckles and made him white. Uh, <laughs> Tougher than Knuckles. With his piss and salt lasers. What? That's right. Yeah, yell That's him right. you're older, Wacky. Yeah, really. Please know that he doesn't chuckle. That's right, Wacky. Oh, my Lord. Pretty Wacky. Hey. I'm so, I'm confused. And curious at the same time. Oh, God. I'll show good. you. Good. So, Fate Zero. All right? Yeah, please. It's a good fucking show. I really like the fact that, like, you can do endings like that because it's a prequel. Um, yeah. I, I guess the ending left me wanting more because... What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Well, from so, humble beginnings. Rewind to episode one. Yeah, start with the characters. Does anybody remember the names of the characters? Because that show is fucked Fuck. up. I remember <laughs> Emiya Kiritsuku in Drama Sam Sama. And Kirei Katamine. Yeah, yeah that's all. The two titular characters. But Emiya is... Titular characters like... means it's the name of the show. Your <laughs> titular character. <laughs> Listen to me like, being dumb. I don't know. Is your name in the name of this podcast? No, it's not. 
Oh, then then Bob's wrong again. <laughs> oh, God. Really oh, so yeah, we they, they actually it's like Naruto those is words. the titular character of Naruto. Is it? <laughs> Whatever, I'm dumb. So let's well, yeah, because he could turn into a girl. <laughs> you can cut that out. You don't need to keep me being dumb in there. You can cut that out. <laughs> anyway, anybody so let's talk that. about episode one. Besides, actually, the fact that... we can't just go from episode to episode. That one of my that would. Fuck. Let's just do it the messy way we've always done it. So, like, right. same thing we did Can with Kabuto? Yeah. The fuck organization. No. Uh, we haven't read it. I <laughs> Stop it, anyway. Yeah, from character right, to go, character. Right, go back to your wrestling visual novels. Main character <laughs> is Emi Akiritsugu, although that's kind of like... That's, I guess he's, he's the closest thing to the main character since this series tends to jump between character to character a lot. He's pretty much the main character. Yes. I'd say, yeah. With main summon saber. Main yeah. Summon Saber, who is Arthur Pendragon, if Arthur Pendragon was a girl. Yes, this Actually, is Arthur Pendragon. Yeah, he, Arturia. Yeah, Arturia. That was about to say. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Like, it well, makes any difference. Well, the thing is, I've never actually watched the original Fate Say Night, as I mentioned last time, but, you know, I I know who Saber is. I know, you know, like, some of the memes and, like, a few spoilers here and there. But, yeah, no, like, they make no effort in this to actually explain why, you know... Arthur Pendragon looks like a little girl. Because fuck it, anime! And type Moon, they like that stuff. There's probably a fucking thing to and, explain. Well, they, do they explain? In the visual novel or whatever, but... Probably in the visual novel, but according to them, on a public statement, they were just saying, no, fuck it, we needed some kind of contrast. I mean, do they explain Gilgamesh from Backstreet Babylon? No, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Backstreet's Bab, all right. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh, no. So Emiya is a mysterious man who he, he's, he's called the Mage Hunter. He goes around killing all sorts of mages because fuck mages. His yep. in his view, even though he himself can do a little bit of magic, such as time slowing. Oh yeah. Magic. By the way, uh, I don't I don't think I have to explain this every time, but fucking big ass, fat ass, fucking giant ass. Spoiler alerts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm throughout this entire second half. I think yeah, I'm just really. gonna put it all caps in the description. So, <laughs> like, spoilers. Just don't watch if you haven't seen it. This is for the people who pretend they can't read. So, yeah, <laughs> or the people who are too lazy to watch, and maybe we can convince. Hey, maybe you should watch through the powerful use of spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Trust me, it's still worth watching after we spoil yeah. the fuck out of right, it. Right. So. Emiya Kuritsugu, the mage killer, mage slayer, something mage like that. Killer. The mysterious mage hunter with the kick-ass gun. Yeah, he, well, he starts out mysterious, at least. So, yeah, his whole thing his is... dead, dead eyes. Uh, hey, Harry Pothead, Abraka gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, These that's bullets are made it. from my ribs. I could literally suck my own dick. <laughs> yeah, also, uh, there's an abridged series for it, Fate Sarah, which is hilarious. It's yeah. really good. So, basically... So, yeah, he's just all just no-nonsense. Just get the job done. He can use magic, but he realizes, you know, you don't need MP for bullets. And super contrast to his to his summon saber, who wants to do everything by the books, fair duels and whatnot. Mm. You know, because King Arthur yeah. in high school... And they're, uh, they're at odds with each other. She thinks she's going to have honorable duels. Nope, going to have this guy snipe. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Not to mention that they don't really have too much interaction with one another yeah. at oh, yeah. all. Yeah, because they knew they wouldn't get along, so he usually sends her out with my his homunculi Iris wife. Yeah. yeah, with his homunculi wife. I- Irisville. Yeah. Who apparently uh, is I'm a not, terrible I'm driver. I'm not sure what accent I'm supposed to use for that. No, well, we'll just call we'll call her Irie. Irisville. I think it's German. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I- Irie, she is, as they keep saying, the homunculus wife who can do... All sorts of magic spells, and basically, Kuritsugu gets people to think, oh, she's Saber's master. And she's also a healer. (laughs) And that's right. Somehow. (coughs) I'm not exactly sure what they meant specifically with the healer, because later on, with one of the others, they can also heal. Magic, dude! What are you talking about? Sit in the circle for a while, and you'll refill your MP. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Apparently it was like more than just like, hey, let's drop in an ether. Apparently, like she's breaking down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so, she is a shit ass temporary homunculus. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I mean, I guess the sad thing about it, you know, the the main characters, you know, uh, Kuritsugu and Saber, they're probably some of the driest out of this <laughs> colorful cast of characters. Very yeah. colorful cast. And for, for good reason. They're like the, uh, stop bouncing your feet, I can see the waves on the, on the mic. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Fucking, because there's so much, there's such a colorful cast of characters that you need the, the dry characters to... To balance it all out. Yeah. For all, for all said and done, Kuritsugu's backstory really kind of like makes up for his dryness. Yeah. Definitely. Very well f- fleshed out in comparison to everybody else. Mm-hmm. Mm. Had to shoot my dad and blow up my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. I had to stab... Yeah, he shot him. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... So those are well. Those... Technically, he also shot her just with something bigger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Saber fights using an invisible sword, Excalibur, mm-hmm. which turns visible when she's ready to just nuke something. Well, yeah, I think it's <laughs> like she, she had like a like a thing of wind around it, so people wouldn't be able to you know gauge exactly how long the sword is, which. I mean, that that's actually, pretty clever. Actually, it's a, yeah, it's a pretty clever strategy. Some tricky shit right there. Yeah, and then when, you know, when she builds up an MP to do her ult, then, you know, you see Excalibur in all its glorious glory. She swings it and, you know, a fucking nuke happens. Their mm-hmm. special moves are called Noble Phantasms. Yep. Which is pretty and that is a cool yeah. name. If a uh, fucking Type Moon didn't use the word Phantasm on everything that they've ever used ever. <laughs> pretty yep. much. Because, I mean, Melty Blood. Melty Blood with phantasms. their marble phantasms. And <laughs> if they didn't use, you know, little high school girls for, like, all of their historical figures, that'd be nice, too. <laughs> yeah, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> so Like their spinoff game. Was it all their, their uh, I, I actually like bra- I actually browsed the wiki a bit. There's, like, there's a lot of characters who have the exact same design as Saber who should absolutely not have the design of Saber. I mean, yeah. we, we should probably mention that, so, like, me, me and Casey, like, eventually, like, Casey Bross is at me around from time to time, but he'll watch me play F- Fate Extra, and apparently Nero just looks exactly like Arthur Pendragon. Yes, uh, Emperor Nero Claudius Caesar Germanus, who, as you may recall, is not a, you know, 16-year-old blonde girl. Is now a sixteen-year-old blonde girl and blonde. fucking archetype Earth, fucking princess style, fucking Arcuate Bernstein or whatever the fuck her name is from uh, Tsukihime, looks just like Saber, <laughs> yeah. only with a white dress. Yeah, sure, why not? It's like bigger and look at me, I'm a god. <laughs> I'm a god, princess vampire. Like I, I, true <laughs> apostle. I mean, she's pretty and all. Just why is King Arthur that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's all about. I think Type Moon's like my art battle style. waifu. Type Moon's art style kind of like blends together. I mean, heck, even in Garden of Sinners, freaking Shiki, she looks like black haired Saber. She does. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm except except on with the assist. <laughs> except she wears a kimono and uses a dagger, and has black hair, but the f- same exact face. Well, same. No, face. well, that, that's just the art style melding. But I mean, with Nero and. This one, like, um, it was like one of the other sabers who was like a samurai, you know, j- you know, a Japanese guy from Japan, is also the exact same design as saber. Oh my god! <clears throat> like, not just similar. I mean, you know, verbatim. Yeah, like the sixteen-year-old blonde girl, you know, with her hair tied in a bun and everything. <laughs> like, it's it's pretty much verbatim. <sighs> but back to back to the characters. Who should we introduce next? I think we should talk. Who was the second person about. to be introduced? Kira. I, I say. Yeah, I think. I say we leave Ryder and Gilgamesh for last. We're gonna do it in order. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna do it in order. Um, uh, Kotomine was in, introduced next because that was when uh, Tosaka, who's also another player as well, so I guess we'll get to him right afterwards. Well, I, I thought I said we were gonna say you know that guy for last. Uh, Kira. No, the checks, uh, Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh. Yeah, we'll, we'll save. Right. Okay, we'll save him. Uh, I guess I don't know. Just Lancer. That should be a quick one. Yeah. Let's yeah. just go with assassins, since they don't do much. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah I find assassin. <laughs> yeah, assassin. Uh, yeah. Actually, first of all, what was assassin's identity? Nobody knows. Nobody cares. He dies in uh, record time. The <laughs> shadow <laughs> group. No, it was like uh, Hassan Il. Uh, it was something Arabic. Well, no, he was. 
probably someone really important to store. Or maybe a group of people important, like the original guild of Chashans or something. Yeah. No, the thing was that, apparently, according to the wiki, it actually was supposed to be one person, but the guild is with him, so the guild also counts as one person. Well, no, he was like a real-life legacy character. Like, when he, you know, he would pass on his title and his name to his successor. Mm. So, when Assassin, the servant, appeared in uh, Fate Zero... He effectively had all of the identities. Mm-hmm. So that's why there was a whole bunch of them. Like, it, it was actually a pretty clever plan at first. Like, um, they just, they send Assassin out, just, you know, being a somewhat competent, stealthy assassin. To go deactivate a force field or some shit. Well, well it, it was an obvious decoy, because yeah. then, well, not an obvious decoy, it turned out to be a decoy, because then Gilgamesh just, like, fucking, He like, gets blasted in the face with a wall of swords, and then... Like, no, he fucking, like, mulches them. Yeah. <laughs> And then, well, Assassin's out of the running. Yeah, so... Or is he? <laughs> well, to, to emphasize what happened to that guy, he was like he had a blender as a ranged weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You talking about the sword that, like... So, yeah. put, put to No, nah, not his main sword. We're talking about s- just his, I'm gonna throw all the swords out of this... Oh, the, the, since the, Assassin, dimension. the Gate of Avalonia. Yeah. Since, yeah. since Assassin himself was pretty simple to describe, Kira is like anything but, since he's... Basically, kind of like the main foil to to uh, Kiritsugu. He's pretty. He, he basically he's a priest who's just. Re- he's also a dry character that becomes less dry throughout the story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah very much so. And can like. I call him a fuck boy. Huh? Yeah, I, what? I don't know. I don't like Kira. <laughs> he kind of is a fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, his whole thing at first was that you know he's just so dedicated to the church that he has absolutely no personal desires of his own. Mm-hmm. Which, as Gilgamesh pointed out... Why don't you have fun, dude? Have fun. <laughs> well, no, specifically, as he pointed out, you associate the word pleasure with sin. <laughs> so, you know, that could be like a deeper introspective into how his fucked up mind works. Or it could just be Gilgamesh saying, like, dude, lighten the fuck up. Seriously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Give me some more wine. <laughs> oh, wait, I drank it all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, watch this. Portal. <laughs> here's my good. Here's my good stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So he, also, Kira is an excellent hand-to-hand combatant. He's very, very durable. He can. I'm pretty sure he's withstood gunshots and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. well, that, let's yeah. say, like, did they ever say like, did he actually have any kind of superpower? Because like, he could punch a guy clear across the room and like, you know, shatter all of his ribs and Magic. survive gunshots. Magic. Apparently, apparently, yeah. Was... Okay, so he was. So he was using his magic for, like, you know, physical attack buff. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Like, super strength and, he also and threw, physical And he also threw some, like, magical, not holy daggers at people, and he was pretty cool. It was pretty much just, um, physical, physical buff In fact, he just, really, like, ma- magical alterations. He really didn't need assassin. Like, he <laughs> <laughs> just kind of fuck some people yeah. on his own. <laughs> assassin was basically just his, his undercover agent just, like, scouting out the area. It was like, just yeah. show me where to go so I can go punch something in the face. Well, yeah, the, the tournament was fucking rigged because, like, he was working with, uh, Kotamine and, you know, the priest who was, you know, basically the referee for the whole thing. They're like, yeah. the three of us Hey, let's all work together. You get assassin. Well, sucks to be you. Uh, you be the scout. <laughs> you be the scout. You pretend but to die. We'll hold seems... you here, and you can still be in the tournament in the sneaky, sneak, shadowy shadows. Yeah, that's the thing about that. Assassin <laughs> basically just seems like he was he was only there just so Kirei could participate in the first place. It, it was kind yeah. of strange as to how he got assassin because the thing what what your class is is supposed to be in contrast to your stats. Kyrie is just good across the board. How the fuck did he get assassin? I mean, contrast your stats. It, it just... It happens... He does stuff in the shadows. Like, you, you usually see... He is a shadowy him, guy. He's a shadowy also, figure. No, no it, it, that it, actually is the rules to, to what class you get. Like, depending on... Well, not only your personality, well, but I, just... I don't remember them explaining that in the show, because, like... Uh, you know, Caster and Murder Buddy were, like, the best of friends. They actually we'll do in Fate Stay Night, but... That's a totally, that's a totally different story. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying I haven't seen that one. Yeah. Anyway, so I think we should talk about um, Tosaka and uh, Gilgamesh since they were the third. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, Kotomine, Tosaka, that's uh, Rin's father, and Rin ends up becoming one of the main characters in the original Fate Stay Night. Yes. Mm. And the so, currently newer remake of So, that yeah, he's well. just this douchebag with, like, you know, a neatly trimmed goatee, 
a, like a red suit with a rose on it. Usually <laughs> drinking wine. <laughs> yeah, like that kind of douche. And go figure, because, you know, the tournament's fucking rigged. He ends up with Gilgamesh. You know... Fucking king of kings. <laughs> well, the king of heroes, as in basically the first character in fiction. And he's yep. Archer. <laughs> and he's Archer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, somehow... He... Solely because he shoots swords. <laughs> yeah, he ends up with the Archer class because he basically rips open a hole in reality and just throws all of his weapons at you. But he has so many weapons and they're so fucking potent it literally is like a fucking blender as a range attack. He just mulches things. He just <laughs> opens up his warehouse of swords and just shoots them all at once. Also, sometimes... Just shoots a bunch. Sometimes he flies on a giant mecha air throne. Yes, he, he has a jet throne. How he, how he <laughs> a golden that? jet throne. I'm not sure how he got it, but I'm not going to question it. I'm to say, are you questioning Gilgamesh? <laughs> Maybe the Tosaka family are just that rich. No, yeah. no, I'd like to think he had it since the beginning. Yeah, no, no, it, I think that's safe it, 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 No, Gilgamesh said it was his. <laughs> yeah, like it was called the uh, Vamana. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my. The Vamana, really? <laughs> Whatever. So, yeah, those, those two guys are pretty prevalent in the series. They're kind of... String pullers, both of them, I'd say. And, you know, uh, Tosaka is seemingly a good father. Seemingly. Well, no, he, he just has unusual values. Like, he cared about, you know, making the most out of both of his daughter's potentials. Just didn't really give a shit whether or not they were happy. Mm-hmm. Yep, so... Um, uh, which, again, like, that's, you know, the contrast to another character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gilgamesh is... Gilgamesh, he's... Just this, like, hilariously overpowered, lazy piece of shit. He's a, sh- he's a fucking shit-ass. He just... <laughs> yeah. Like, he spends most of the tournament just lounging around getting drunk. And oh, doesn't... I, hope you, I hope you hide your wine. Oh, wait, it won't matter. He'll find it. And tries not to exert... He, he exerts himself as little as possible. Like, like he ends up actually hanging out with uh, Kire more than uh, Kotamine. Apparently, for the sole reason that his wine was a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like... And then he's like, hey... I'm an asshole. What, what if you tried being an asshole? Most of his scenes were him just laying around on a couch in fucking normal ass, like, well, normal for him, street clothes, drinking wine, and just leopard skin it, pants. And just fucking <laughs> chopping it up with, uh, Kira. with Kira. But just pretty much just all he really does, just sit in the back, just pretty much talk about, like, guys, I don't know what you're worried about. It's me, Gilgamesh. I'm just, gonna win. Just, <laughs> Just kind of... I'm gonna win. Just trying to get into... Get, did you say his name again? Um, Kirei. Just yeah. trying to get into Kirei's mind. Just basically being his therapist. But, like, backwards. Yeah. Like, instead of making you better, he makes you worse. As Come a human on, being. live a little. Have fun. <laughs> if you want to kill people, then so be it. Come on. You know what you should do? You should stab... T- <laughs> you, can, you should stab Tosaka. That would really be fun for you. Go ahead, just do it. Stab your mentor. Well, the thing is, though, like, because Kiare has just absolutely no fulfillment in his life, he, you know, eventually this actually starts getting to him, because, like, he has absolutely no fucking idea what to do. He's a liberal arts major across the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, well, Assassin's Day. Like, he realized, wait. You're out of the tournament. I, I actually... could kill you right now. But... Tosaka's kind of boring, and, uh, you know, we could transfer to other masters. So, just a thought. Just a thought. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, So, yeah, he realizes apparently the only thing he actually, you know, finds enjoyment out of is, you know, just betrayal, murder, and just people, you know, just having a bad time. Generally people's misery. (laughs) To which he drinks from their tears. (laughs) Oh, does he drink from their tears? (laughs) So, um, yeah, I guess we probably should have gotten to the other ones before getting to this point, but yeah. yeah. He ends up, yeah, he he stabs Rin's father. And since, you know, he's missing a servant, and now Gilgamesh is missing a master, he becomes Gilgamesh master. Handshake. And so we can lead this into fucking Black Knight. Uh, yeah, Karya Mato, mm-hmm. who best. is from the, um, the Mato clan, I'm pretty sure they're called, right? Yeah. The, though, the, he, it, though he left because, uh, you know, for good reason, because they're all fucking terrible people. He's yeah. like, hey, I kind of don't feel like being terrible. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, um, he finds out that uh, that Tosaka gave um, one of his daughters, Sakura, away to the Mato clan. And he was like, what? 
<laughs> Why did you do that? You're gonna touch him bad with the bad worms. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> which bad really worms. wasn't a appropriate response because this guy is like dripping with evil. Like, He's like, well, you know what? I really only have enough time to raise one daughter properly. So, hey, who wants a daughter? <laughs> like, she like this old man looks like one of the evilest old men. Yeah, you. You, like, you, the like, first time he comes on the scene, you're like, yep, he's evil, he's bad, someone should probably kill him immediately. Like, like, he looks like an older, more evil version of Emperor Palpatine. Because, like, he's yeah. Emperor Palpatine on crack. Just, okay, Just okay. put the hood on I, him. I got, a pretty good, I got a pretty good example, even though I don't know if you guys all watch Basilisk, but he looks like an evil old person who came from Basilisk and accidentally wandered his way onto the cast of Fate. Because <laughs> <laughs> that show has like some evil-ass-looking old people. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't watch the whole thing. Thing, but I know this. Episode one, you know this. <laughs> but anyway, so Karia is, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy. He just want he's looking out for Sakura. I don't, he doesn't want her to be bad, touched by the bad worms. Yeah, he looks <laughs> bad to the, the evil magical bad worms and bugs in their basement that she has to be sitting in a pool of. And he's like, no, 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 being no. thoroughly violated by. Yes, he's like, thoroughly. I can't, I, I can't do this. Don't don't involve her. I'll do it. Oh, really? You want this? You want the, you don't want this. But I do. I'll take the magical okay. bad... I'll take the bullet for this one. I'll take the magical bad touch worms, and then I'll get you the grail, you old evil fuck. Wait, you're gonna get Good. me the grail? Okay, you got... Dude, this process, by the end of this process, you're gonna die within three months. And by the time the grail starts, you got about a week. You're gonna fuck this so up. So basically, he has... Then he eventually has Makai insects living inside of him. And he looks like shit. Like he looks shit. terrible. He looks like a shambling, white-haired mess with a milky eye. Not to mention the veins. Yeah, his veins are like, you know, popping out everywhere. Like, they exude insects. Yeah, randomly bursting. pretty cool. The veins aren't even going. That's just the worms crawling through his body. Yeah. (laughs) No, at one point, you know, like, he pulled up his shirt and, like, you know, his torso was, like, partially decomposed. He's, like, missing a few chunks. Yep. Mm. He's like, well, yep, dying. So, which say it's really quite thoroughly appropriate for Berserker's Master. Yep. <laughs> the best. Wish he was in it more, but you could tell by the graphics that they had, he was money intensive to put in the show. No, it got every yeah, time was, this guy shows up on screen. He's CG. just shaking and clinging and yelling. He, I think he like, was He the, doesn't even speak up until the end. You just hear the sound of like metal creaking and bending and just a really low pitched muffled scream. And high <laughs> and loud muffled screaming. Ah, right. <laughs> yeah. Preceded by loud muffled screaming. Yeah. So, so, um, his appearance, this, the scene where everyone just kind of shows up was the best fucking scene. Like, it starts off with Saber and, uh, Lancer just fighting it up. And then all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> Assassin's kind of on the perch watching everybody. And, and then, then Ryder shows up like, eh, there's a fight going on. Yeah, all the warriors are here. Anybody who's not out here right now? Fucking bitches. <laughs> Come out here and fight. Oh, yeah. And then Berser- and then Berserker and fucking Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh show. show up. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We ain't no bitches. No, hang on just a no, minute. No, 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 no. Gilgamesh shows up is like, we ain't no bitches. Then Berserker shows up and kind of makes like muffled noises yeah. <laughs> while running around and hitting people. Yeah. Just like specifically looking at Gilgamesh for a couple of seconds, only to just and then Gilgamesh just like you're getting the swords first, and then shoots the walls of swords. I, uh, and... uh, uh, to clarify, like the other characters talk shit to Gilgamesh too, but he's, he's <laughs> yeah. just you know laughing along with them. And to clarify but... with uh, Berserker making muffled noises, I think that depends on whether you watch the Japanese or English dub because the two are drastically different when it comes to Berserker in particular. I watched we watched the subs, so we yeah. don't know. I, I watched the Japanese, but I, I think it actually sounded even better in English. Well, with Berserker, I agree. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, with, with Berserker. Berserker in particular sounded incredibly better in oh, English. Oh, especially, no, at, at the at the end, when, when the helmet comes off, then no contest. The English version is so much better. Yeah, oh. without, <laughs> oh, qu- without question. No, 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 let's, oh, yeah, let's yeah, that's, the helmet That's, that's the sad thing about it. In the Japanese version, you know, when his helmet comes off, prepare for, you know, a little unintentional humor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, but, but yeah. With... And he stops becoming CG. <laughs> for yeah. some reason the CG well, magic no because no, no, that was the point one of his noble phantasms was the uh, shroud around him that like stopped people from identifying him yeah uh. one thing I want to point out about Berserker is I feel like he was really the only other character who 
stood a chance against Gilgamesh. Just because he was so erratic and crazy. And they had crazy. a fucking dog fight. Uh, they did have a dog <laughs> fight. Oh, no, let's, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves, yeah, let's, though. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. So, first interact of everybody basically meeting up. Well, for, like, like, yeah, I was saying, though, like, the other, like, all the other guys, well, Saber and Ryder were talking shit to Gilgamesh. He's just laughing along with him. The Black Knight, like, he just... He's just, just me- sitting there stewing, just staring at Gilgamesh. Like, like, wait, mm-hmm. oh, wait, the fuck, wait. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you giving me <laughs> Gilgamesh like you giving me the screw face, boy? <laughs> you gotta go first and just start <laughs> shooting walls of swords at him. He's a, he does the swaggiest dodge, <laughs> just the illest fucking limbo. Uh, grab a sword out the air and then smashes the other and one. Then chuck Ex- it. No, no, explosion. Right, let's, 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 let's slow Take down for a second here. And then chuck it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, Gilgamesh, you, you know, he opens his space time bullshit portal. Like shoots two swords at him like a fucking railgun. No. He shoots. He shoots a wall at him, but like. Oh no! No, that's afterwards. First, he just shoots two. Hmm. So yeah. like Black Knight, he d- he doesn't move. Oh, he doesn't walk out of the way. You just see an explosion, but then he's still standing there. Now he's holding one of the swords. Then you know because it's an anime, they go back and they're like, all right, slow motion replay. Yeah. The swords coming at him. He, he do- catches like he dodges, catches the first sword, and then uses it to parry the other sword. Mind you, these swords are going at, like, fucking mock speed. He dodges the sword, and then while the sword is passing his face, he catches it, and mid-spin, smashes the lance that's coming out of him, and it just explodes. And there's his noble phantasm, everybody. Whatever he grabs, he just fucking explodey smash thing. Well, yeah, a- anything he grabs that could... Cons- Gets an attack buff. That could conceivably be considered a weapon becomes, like, a noble phantasm. And to be more specific about it, it, it kind of... The, like, he'll pick up a pipe, and the pipe will become black with red veins. No, oh, yeah, actually, pretty much right after he loses those two weapons, he actually grabs, like, a street light. Yeah. Just, like, a, a street lamppost. Yeah. And he starts swinging it around like it's a weapon. Yeah. Yeah, like you think he werewolf from Portrait of Ruin. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyway. but, yeah, like, he actually stood a chance, because yeah. he can actually turn Gilgamesh's overpowered weapons against him. And then Ryder ran his ass over with his fucking chariot. He was like, get out of here. <laughs> And now I think that's a good time to talk about w- Velvet Waver. And Ryder, also best. Iskangar, the king of kings. <laughs> oh, king of conquerors. King of conquerors. Well, whatever. Alexander the Great. Who yeah. well, apparently is huge when he's supposed to be small. We've discussed this with Saber already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Backstreet Babylon. <laughs> these, these, two, these two are great. I like these. <laughs> two characters. They're oh. probably the most endearing characters out of the whole show. Definitely. I, without question. Holy shit, we actually the coming of age story when he finds his, yeah, his father figure in in fucking Alexander the Great. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Like, I really wanted those two to win. Oh, yeah. sorry. Spo- uh, spoilers. They yeah. don't. Whatever. Velvet w- Waver. Waver is just basically the youngest character in the show. And again, I'd like to point out that Unlike in the original Fates Day Night, which mainly focused on a bunch of high school kids, maybe some adults here and there, this is mostly an adult show. It's, he's he's a kid, but he's a college kid, so that's mm-hmm. kind of like one thing to note. And he's a bright kid, just well, well, kind of a coward. Like, you know, he was in college because you know he was so smart, he skipped like twenty grades. It was I don't also really know his probably age. maybe. I, th- I think that's what they were like, trying to whole, say with him. His whole point, like, at first was pretty much just to... I hate my teacher. My teacher sucks. He's an <laughs> asshole. I'm talented. Like, you don't have to be from a talented family. I wrote this whole thesis on how you don't have to be from a talented family. And then my teacher was like, nah, sorry. Your thesis is bullshit. It's like, yeah. So I stole his thing that so he was going to use. So I stole a cloth out of, his, <laughs> out of his drawer. Whoops. I accidentally summoned Alexander Great. And he is, bro... <laughs> he, for all intents and intents and purposes, yes, he is he a is. guy who is fascinated with like everything about conquering things and, and just, weapons and weapons. tanks and helicopters and, and like, tight weapons. shirts and pants. Like I don't say it's lightly. He really was and just game like consoles, apparently as well. Didn't yes, buy, like like one with two controllers. Yeah, no, like, well, well, not not well, not just game consoles. General specifically, he bought like. You know, some kind of like, game. yeah. You bought like you know a conquest, you know, strategy style game. He basically like, bought like Command and Conquer, or Fire basically, well, basically so he could like you know play a video game about his own exploits, or Civ or something. 
Yeah, yeah you know, like one of those civilizations. Civilization, but R- yeah, I, I don't say it's like he really was like one of the manliest characters I've ever seen. Yeah, and I definitely think that Waver went through a lot of really great character development because he kind of starts the story off being basically typical, you know, like I'm a brainiac, but I'm also a coward and would rather not get into the action. To becoming more brave and you know less less of a bitch until fucking uh, step brother uh, Alexander the Great. <laughs> Yeah, like, he basically made a man out of him. Yeah, and they, they kind of started off in a rocky relationship. Like, Alexander's like, yeah, let's go out and fight. Waver's and Waver's like, all like, put on pants. Put on pants. <laughs> <laughs> or, or more accurately, let's sit back and assess the situation first. Let's not get too cr- No, no! We need to go now! You've assessed the situation. Now let's go punch the situation in the face. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was an incredible bromance. Well, I mean, his plan was, I'll, I'll find all the other servants... Shout really loud so they all hear me. Group fight, and I'm gonna win. <laughs> Basically, yeah, they were they were excellent, and uh, like they they sound like a bunch of idiots, but it was it's just so unbelievably endearing. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah. going to be your favorite characters. They will yeah. be your favorite characters. You're not gonna like you. You can go into the series and be like, just because you said that, I'm not gonna like them. We're gonna love them. <laughs> it's going to happen. You're just gonna be like, oh. oh the- Ooh. Wow, Bob Zero, your your fan base sure sounds stupid. <laughs> oh, wow. Don't bring no. I already brought it up earlier. Whatever. <laughs> and the and, and the feels, the feels. Oh, so, but let's wherever you tell everyone of my greatness, and you make sure they change those history books to tell them I'm not short. <laughs> yeah, Waver grew up well. <laughs> he, yeah. he definitely, definitely did, and he also was great at, at hypnotizing people. And he hypnotized, he hypnotized some old people, and then yeah. they, they eventually stopped being hypnotized. It's like we know you're not our grandson, but you can stay anyway. Yeah. Our grands, our grandkids don't come and visit us anyway. Those little like, shits. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you don't need to hypnotize us. Just we have attention now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. The, the sweet old people too. Just everything about these characters was just so wonderful. Yeah, they were the they just, were definitely the warmer side of this yeah. series. It's actually yeah. pretty dark. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, uh, then next, do you want to go into you know the darker side? I mean, we could um, we could talk. The, about let's him. let's let's save him for last because he okay. kind of he was actually the one that got the one the last by episode two. So basically, also we have freaking Lancer. Who, yep. Uh, is... Pretty boy Lancer. No, yeah. he. I actually, I think I liked him more than most people did. Yeah, like, he really there's... wasn't. I, like everyone keeps saying he was just like you know the useless filler character, but you know he actually says what his story is and you know how that's parallel with what's going on. Mm-hmm. His um, for the series Lancer, he's the servant of um Waver's teacher, which we're not gonna say because I can't fucking pronounce his name. <laughs> no, no, just. Uh, Look it up. It, it's, Look it up. It's Waver's teacher. We'll keep saying that. It's, Waver's douchebag teacher. It, it's five words, like the syllables in the double digits. Go, go look it up. <laughs> I mean, it is pretty interesting to know that just Waver pretty much did shit shit on him for actually proving his his uh his thesis wrong because he did actually summon somebody. Yeah, boy, was despite he's... not being of like any sort of royal heritage. Boy, but he uh, summoning somebody for the Holy Grail War kind of. It's both your stats and also right place at the right time. It's not always if you're the most powerful mage. Yeah, well, his, his point was, like, if I'll win, then I'll prove that, you know, everything. Yeah. But he definitely got further than him. Yep. Uh, he yeah. He definitely did. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lancer was a... Uh, uh, Diamond. Uh, Diramund. Uh, Diramund. I don't know the full name either. Uh, unfortunately, he's, I guess, not a very well-known historical figure. But yeah, his, whole th- his whole thing... Like, as cliche as it sounds, it actually did matter. He's, you know, cursed so that women fall in love with him. Something about the mole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, it literally is something about the mole. No, because, you know, uh, back in his actual historical period, that was the whole point. He ended up in an affair with his lord's wife, and that ended up, you know, getting everyone killed. That beauty mark right in the eye it just attracts them. It just pulls yeah. the bitches in. <laughs> so that's the thing, you know. He's... And some men. Yeah, like, like his goal is just lawful neutral. Just I'm going to serve my lord, do whatever he needs. But then he totally notices his lord's, you know, arranged wife, fiance, who clearly doesn't love him, is like starting to fall for him. He's, He's like, like, oh man, oh, fuck, this, uh, 
this shit again. Again. <laughs> Although uh, I don't have the feelings to re- reciprocate. Unfortunately, stickers were not invented at the time. <laughs> yeah, let's not get too into. Don't get too. Don't get too into the abridged. Yeah. But no, I mean that's it's it's pretty legit. Like you know, I actually fell for that, and also he he was also one of the other few like legit honorable fighters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because you know everyone else was doing all this you know wacky crazy shit. It really was kind of sad. Or being see. lazy, fuck like he has some tricky ass shit going on with his uh with his. Yeah, but that, that with was, his lances, but that's just tactics. That wasn't. Yeah, that that's at least you know actually in a fair fight. That's skill, not you know like you know shooting the guy in the back before the fight starts. One of my lances goes through armor, and one of them makes unhealable wounds. Pretty much. Yeah. It was actually it was actually pretty legit. Like he first he stabs her with the one that goes through armor, so she decides, all right, fuck it, armor doesn't work. Last cannon fight. He stabs her with the other one. It's like, hey, by the way, you could have blocked that with your armor. <laughs> this one says you can't yeah. heal. And, and what, what, I, what I really liked was that the, the curse that the spear made, I'm not going to say exactly what that was, it lasted for most of the series. Like, he, he didn't take that shit off for most of the series. It was there, and it was a hindrance. Mm-hmm. Yep. She had to fight with one arm. For, for, a, good, for a good period of time, at least. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was an interesting dynamic. No, yeah, and then every time, you know, he was fighting with Saber, like, well, after the curse was removed, he had to, you know, destroy one of his lances for it. Yeah. So then, when he fought her, he's like, wait, why are you swinging so... You're only swinging with one hand. <laughs> My nigga. All right, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess... No, I guess... like, no, no I was... Res- All right, come on. Like, you could fight me for real. And Saber's like... No, nah, no, nah, you, you had to do that to give me my arm back? Like, no, no. We, you lost we, we it. It's like, you lost a lance, I lose I lose an arm, all right? Let's do this. Like, the, yeah, they were just, it's just so admirable watching them fight so honorably. Yeah. But then, well, as they're having their last, you know, real honorable fight, yeah. then, you know, we, we mentioned Kuritsugu, you know, no nonsense, just get shit done. He, he basically just, you know, Goes up to uh, Lancer's master at gunpoint and just says, "Hey, um, got your wife, got your wife, sign this contract, and um, you're going to use your command seal to make Lancer commit suicide, or I'm going to shoot you and your wife." Well, it wasn't. Huh. It wasn't really. He had to sign it so much as that was a signed contract when he entered the Grail Grail War that he couldn't kill the target. So well, he no, made... no, well, the contract was something entirely separate. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, it was yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. uh, no need to get too specific into no that. No need to get too Basically, much Basically, he said, like... I think before... Long right, story short, fill this out. Everything will be square. I won't do anything to you. And then, as long as you make your servant kill themselves. And you... I won't do anything to you or your wife. All right? Yeah. I was pretty sure... And before we go off you. on the results of this, I kind of want to talk about the, the Waver's teacher a little bit. And how much of a... Like, the second you see him, his life is over. Yep. Because he, he made that one rude comment to Waver, and it was just downhill from, from there. there. Slow downhill. He got called a bitch by Alexander the Great. He got shot by that magical fucking rip bullet, which fucked up his magic so circuits. Gets, and and the re- and most of his body, so he was crippled. Almost got his hand ripped off by his own wife. Yep. And almost got his and got his wife stolen by a servant, basically. This guy like, caught did, no breaks. It didn't really come out of nowhere, though. He was he was telling Waver how he was about to, you know, murder him. You know, he's telling this kid, Hey, you stole my shit, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But yeah. he Actually, got... no, no, fix it. he was saying like, you know, how you, you know, I'm gonna kill you slowly. <laughs> it's like, hey, you wanted to be in this girl war, little boy? You you got it. Just I'm like going to show fall, you the horrors of war. A fall from grace, because considering the fact that he seemed like such a competent mage, only to be, like, bodied by a guy who just kind of knows, like, entry-level magic and has a really cool gun. Well, you're well, that Mercury, short. He's the mage hunter. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, I wouldn't really say fall from grace. He's just, you know, he's a good mage and all. Just If anything, yeah. he got bodied because he was underestimating. Not yeah, yeah that's the point. Like, in his tr- cockiness got the better of him. Yeah. Which, that's that's how, you know, the mage killer works. Oh, you, you think you're cocky because you got all this, you know, you focus, can make focus, a focus giant... bullshit? Well, Abraka gunshot. You can make a giant mercury bullet? I'll figure you out. He's like, you making fun of my machine gun until I put the pull the whammy out, and then fucking <laughs> you block it with your magic and get fucked up. I love from... that gun. It, it really reminds me of, like, the caster bullets from, from, Outlaw, from Star. Tri- Outlaw Star, although much more... Just, this is, just, boom! 
that's it. almost nothing like the cast of guns from Outlaws. Just be, no, in terms of how overpowered it is, because the gas, because the cast of guns actually like shot magic. This was kind of like a, a magic feedback loop gun, mm-hmm. where it like shoots, and then the more magic you use to try to block it, the more powerful it becomes. And then it just fucks your shit right up. I think the abridged actually got it pretty accurate. It's like a vasectomy in a bullet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> magical much. vasectomy in a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool concept, nonetheless. But you know, he's very, very tragic character. Like I'd say, in terms of just like, like just everything went wrong for him the second he was a dick. Just mm-hmm. Car- Carl was just a colossal. Because even, 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 even being a high tier dick, I don't think half the shit that happened to him he deserved. Really. Like, not completely. Yeah. Not completely. He was an asshole. It was warranted, like, but not after, that degree. After the magic circuit fuck-up thing, that should have been, like... <laughs> that should have been it. That should have been... The like, end. Like, okay, I'm like, okay, I get that. You deserve that for being an asshole. But then the whole arm thing... All right, all right, you can lay lay off him a little bit. And then bit. the wife thing. Well, it's, oh, it's per- yeah, pretty oh. much like... And then the contract thing. Oh. oh. <laughs> It wasn't, even, it wasn't even just that. It's just like he—he's also like effectively out of the game, and yeah. he's trying to go to the church. He's like, "Oh, sorry, you got—you still got your commercial, so you're still in the game. Can't protect you. Sorry." The thing is, well, like, fuck you, then. Black. <laughs> like any other writer could have said, you know, when he got hit by the magic bullet, that, that would have just fucking killed him, and you know, he's dead. And I don't know, like the wife gets it or something. They basically just kept him around just to get his ass kicked, yeah. <laughs> just even to shit more. upon his life. And then end it promptly. Oh, God, his wife. Ooh. He's like, I'm not going to do anything to you. I promise. <laughs> and then he wheels him out into the open where his assistant shoots the shit out of him. <laughs> I told you. I said I wasn't going to do anything. I said I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Contract loopholes. And so For sure, now, yeah, he did effectively kill his wife no, and then just leave him to die. <laughs> no, but it, like, it, it was just a really fucked up scene because... Well, we don't really know why it was happening at first. Just, you know, Saber and Lancer are having an honorable duel between knights. Then all of a sudden, you know, like, Lancer's eyes bug out and he stabs himself with it. And, then, like, you, like, like his eyes go bloodshot, it, blood's dripping out of his mouth. And, and he like, starts yeah, like, no, cursing. now he's fucking mad. Like, a plague on all your houses. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, we were having an honorable one-on-one fight. You and your master are going to pull this shit? Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Fuck you! Fuck you! A plague on all your houses! And he disintegrates in the hardcore metal fashion. <laughs> yeah, no, like, it, it was a nasty death. Yeah. Very nasty. And, and that's why, kids, don't commit suicide. <laughs> and guys, what we've... this None of what we just talked about is as nasty as the final... The caster... And and his, his character. and his wow, you terrible oh, person. No. I'm um, not a terrible person. I, I, I can't. He, you can't even lie. I love Caster too. Yeah, fucking yeah. like I, he, he's fucking horrible, but he was barrels of fun. He was yeah. barrels and barrels of fucked up fun. And and his, him, barrels him of fun and, his, and barrels of children. Him and his master Ryunosuke. <laughs> they never say it like that. It's yeah, just Ryunosuke. <laughs> Yeah, so basically, um... The murder buddies. So, like, their introduction is, this serial killer, you know, he just ki- killed two people, and, you know, he's basically taking his time killing the kid, and he basically accidentally pulls out a page out of, like, the Necronomicon or something, and he summons Bluebeard. They or, didn't do it accidentally. It was like, I wonder if this will actually work, and he makes a pentagram with children blood, and then fucking yeah. s- <laughs> summons Bluebeard. <laughs> or, uh, Giles Derise, the, uh... Who historically was, you know, a famous murderer and rapist of many, many children. Hmm. Yep. And I think this series definitely, 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 even if you didn't want to see it. You know, definitely just, got him down yeah. pretty accurately. And they're just sitting there exchanging murder-killing notes. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking yeah. children, children murder notes. Yeah, having way, a good like, old time. Like, so a lot of the other masters have some, like, some kind of serious contrast between them. Or some of them, you know, they just can't work together at all, like Kiritsugu and Saber. These two, like, they're, they're just the best murder buddies. Two peas in a they pod. Have some great synergy. They like... just hit it off. And... He's like, hey, I love murdering children. I love murdering children, too. We have so much and in common. We're like, like a hand in a glove. And because it's, like, <laughs> such, like, fucked up imagery, like, 
I like we watched it on Crunchyroll, and I definitely see that they cut certain parts. Mm-hmm. Especially like after watching the uh, uh, again Fate Zero to bring that up, they showed scenes. I'm like, I don't remember him. A- I don't remember actually seeing him do this to the kid. Like, yep. they didn't. They didn't show shit. Like, and I can see why because. You know, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> it's still to... fucked up, even if they don't show it. You hear noises. Shit's brutal. It's brutal. And then they they fucking they put together a fucking murder dungeon. <laughs> yeah, just 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 like they they have no stakes in this girl war. They're just going on a cross country kid murdering spree. They yeah, no, no, they actually said like, oh, grail war. If you get the grail, you get to. Uh, who cares? You have superpowers, right? Let's go murder more children. I, I got what I wanted. I got my murder buddy like with magic. Point? So let's just let's just do what we want. Like the uh, point of the Holy Girl War was that it's supposed to be in secret, but they just go out of their way to not make it a make secret it at all. And that's why all the other masters will most. We gotta have stop it. this motherfucker. This guy. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, yeah, they all have their disagreements and whatnot, but he's literally just going around, you know, on a child murder spree. And so, all the all the fucking masters like this. This guy's gotta go. This guy's gotta fucking go. <laughs> yeah, and also uh, he summoned Cthulhu. Fuck. He summoned the Deep One. <laughs> yeah, I know. And at the end, you know, a Bluebeard pulls out his special book, <laughs> says, says the magic words, and then he literally pulls out like a skyscraper size Lovecraftian horror. Yeah, <laughs> and not to mention he can also like uh, to so before we get into that part though. Even before that, he also, Bluebeard, it, it's worth pointing out that Bluebeard has a thing for Saber. Oh, right. Yeah. Thinks that he's, oh, yeah, she's I, Joan of Arc. <laughs> well, he thinks she is. Like, yeah, 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 his whole plan was, uh, he thought Saber is Joan of Arc, and he wants her to regain her memories of being Joan of Arc. Except she can't, because yeah. she's Arthur. Through vigorous right? rape. Vigorous. Yes. <laughs> vigorous rape from the little, little, like, the smaller deep ones that he can summon... <laughs> that are evil tentacle starfish yes. things. Yeah, it's it's really not ambiguous at all. He was, like, totally trying to tentacle rape Saber. <laughs> yep. But yep. she'd be like, no, stop it. You're like, oh, you gotta be the one. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, that's the thing. I haven't heard him in English, but, like, his voice is fucking hilarious in Japanese. <laughs> I'm pretty is. sure his English voice is, is, is yeah, it's, good. it's up to par. <laughs> like, From one, the like, one scene I saw. No, this guy, is, he's just totally hamming it up every scene. I actually like, did hear him in English. And yes, he is up to par with Johnny Young Bosch as Renosuke. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, serial killer Johnny Young Bosch. Like you hear this guy, just, like, <laughs> like he's just going all in with every line. Like you hear him starting to run out of breath. His his voice matches his bucked out eye crazy face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, he's just hamming it up. He is he is loving every minute yeah. of his evil existence. Well, there was a moment where he hated it until, like, Ryanosuke remo- like, gives him like, a why does, look on life. Yeah, why does God hate us? Why does he keep... Like, wait. Whoa, maybe I whoa, should actually whoa, try whoa. being good, and then maybe God will do something good for me. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if God <laughs> wants us to kill these kids? <laughs> what if that, God has a really fucked up sense of humor, hmm. and he loves watching us kill kids? <laughs> well... I, I, again, like guys, let's not just quote the abridged series here. I, I'm not I trying to. I'm just trying yeah. to. No, no. He, yeah. he actually made a somewhat valid. If he's like, you see all these tragedies that be popping off, all these like earthquakes, fucking people shooting people. What we're do- we're just entertaining God right now. <laughs> he said, "Well, his logic was, you know, like what if holiness and praise are basically the same thing as you know." Like, no, it's like, what if a great sin entertains God exactly as much as a great praise? So like, instead of like, so instead of going backwards and trying to be good, we just that's just going to make us neutral and boring. So we need to commit more sins to get more of God's attention, and then things will get better. <laughs> Normal <laughs> sins God don't like. You got to go really, really, you got to go deep. You got to go hard. They're you got to like, go for the top shelf. Yeah. Praise and sin are both two sides of the same coin, so we're just going to be like the Pope of killing children. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Basically. Well, or I guess you know, we've already gone this far into it. As the abridged series like summed up that entire speech, instead yeah. of going the whole speech, uh... all right, Caster, hear me out. <laughs> what if God loves killing children? <laughs> You just blew my fucking mind! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And now on to when the deep one happens, the big deep. Uh, oh, yeah. That's basically the mid part of the season. I think like this was a two season series, so that had to have sucked if you kept up with it at the time and had to wait two months to figure out what happened at the end of that. Because it was like old oh, deep one. Wait for the next season. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they that episode that that whole part was like three episodes long or something like that it was a big deal because that was happening <laughs> berserker and gilgamesh were having a dog fight freaking uh <laughs> berserker grabbed onto a jet <laughs> no, 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 let's get to that in just a second <laughs> so yeah before they were going on their whole murder spree and you know the police are getting involved like they're trying to figure out like, why are all these children getting murdered so these but then are... at this point like hey cthulhu monster so and now the military is getting involved yeah. yeah, so, now it's, it's so like, I mean, the fuck hiding the Grail War at this point. They literally, like, send in fighter jets. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, Gilgamesh is watching from above on his jet throne. <laughs> but, like... Yeah. So but then, remember how we said the Black Knight, if he touches something that could be conceived as a weapon, turns, you know, black and red and becomes his weapon? He jumps in the fucking air, lands on a fighter jet. <laughs> <laughs> the fighter jet turns black, red, fiery veins appear all over it. The fighter jet is now his weapon. Is now his noble phantasm. Yep. And him and Gilgamesh have an epic dogfight. Yeah. Yes, the missiles and Gatling guns on the on the jet are also his noble phantasm. That, that scene really reminded me of the scene from Karis when the fact that, oh hey, Karis can turn to a jet plane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no no trust me, he could do it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it happens. Hey, it really reminded me of that though, and I really enjoyed it. But uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, oh man, that was the best. (laughs) But uh, and then the jet gets blown up, and he takes the giant Gatling gun, and he has that for a little while. He's like, oh, he can still fight. Nah, he takes that away from him immediately. Like, no, you cannot have that gun. Stop it. (laughs) Bad, bad berserker. Bad. Just, it was, like, before they got to that point, it was something I wondered about. Like, I understood, you know, if he picked up a sword, it becomes, you know, his special sword. If he picks up a pipe, the pipe becomes a weapon. But what if he actually touched something complex like a fighter jet? And you actually see him just literally just holding onto the fighter jet, flying around at mock speed. The pilot's probably dead just from going that fast. The pretty G's much. have... I'm, I'm pretty sure the G's killed, killed the shit him. out that pilot. Pretty much. Yeah. Because that was a... That was a fucking Metcross Plus. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got crushed inside of the seat. Oh, yeah, they, they probably had some, like, Devil May Cry nonsense out. Oh, because it's his weapon, he can create his own bullets. <laughs> probably. Because, like, like so I mean, the bullets were all, you know, like, black and on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess, like... From here on, those are like the central main characters. I think from here on out, we can... Should we end it here or talk about the ending? Because I don't know if we we want... Well, we still didn't finish Berserker. Because that's the thing, like, also every time they're fighting... Usually Berserker's whole thing is, you know, he's just aggro to whoever the strongest guy is at the time. Usually starts with Gilgamesh. But also, for some reason, he keeps specifically going for uh, Saber. Or... And he actually manages... Oh, baby's first word. Alpha! You hear it, like, very muffled up, and it sounds very menacing. Until he takes the helmet off. Well, that's that's only in the Japanese version. In the English one, he still sounded pretty cool. It sounded cool, but in that, the that, Japanese dub, which is... Yeah, yeah, just, just, just... just as a warning, when the helmet comes off, if you're watching the Japanese version, it's kind of unintentionally hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, um, his final battle with Saber, which... I mean, they knew it was going to be a final battle, so they loaded him out. They gave him, like, a bunch of, like... And she was hilarious. He chased him on a hel- on a fucking motorcycle, wasn't it? Uh, no, yeah. no. Oh, uh, no. Did he? Uh, did he? Oh, yeah. And then they got into a car park. Yeah, and yeah, then... yeah. They, they end up fighting in, like, a parking complex, and basically they loaded him up with, like, a Gatling gun, two submachine guns, because, <laughs> like, now they're, like, magic-powered submachine guns. Fuck it. That's right. <laughs> to which, like, Saber had to f- constantly find cover and just hope that he ran out of bullets. I mean, she was Black blocking. Knight. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> she was blocking a few of them, but you know, he's a berserker. Except yep. for like <clears throat> their magic bullets, so they ate through the cover. <clears throat> yeah, then... it's just like I mean, it's bad enough, you know, King Arthur trying to fight a Gatling gun, but now it's a magic Gatling gun. <laughs> yeah, and then that. helmet splits. Turns out it's Lancelot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think they give you like a split second hint before that when he pulls out his true noble phantasm, 
And you know, Sam replies, "Wait, Arundite? Mm. If, if anyone knows, you know, King Arthur, that slants a lot sword. Yep, that gave me like a one second head start. I'm proud of that." <laughs> So, so yeah, when you actually see Lancelot now, you know, like, his eyes are, like, yellow slits, his teeth are sharpened to fangs, and, you his know... His teeth are sharpened to, like, piranha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I couldn't take him seriously Someone who looks so majestic in his past turns out to be a piranha fish later on. Because he went fucking crazy. Because Arthur doesn't know how to lead. <laughs> At all. No, it wasn't just that. No, it was... Why well, didn't you reprimand me, you shit? Well, because, you know, Lancelot had an affair with Guinevere, which is technically probably less of an offense in the Fate universe because, you know, you know Gwen- Guinevere and Arthur weren't actually, you know, because Arthur was a girl. Be angry at me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I guess while this was happening, also, Kure and uh, Kotomine were just <laughs> fighting it up upstairs. <laughs> Basically. And having, having a pretty cool... Fucking guns versus hand to hand and magic knives. Fight. There was fight. a good. I think it was more like more about the hand to hand, which is which is why I really appreciate it. That's a really smooth animation, just all around really nice. The hits were impactful. Well, like, use the knives to like close distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you felt it became the hand to hand. You felt the hits when they happened, and the hits were good. Yeah. That that freaking that magic kempo. Yeah. So yeah, just you know, physical attack buff. Yep. And so, uh, Saber's master, uh, Saber's master Kuritsugu. Kuritsugu wins the fight, and then yeah. Kuritsugu wins the fight, and then the Grail is like, "Hey, you did it!" Uh, actually, uh, before we get to that, let's just get to like you know everyone's actual ending. Oh yeah, yeah. Or yeah, just, sure. or just you know, we you, already did Lancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah Lancer and. But that's the thing, yeah, the, like, the deaths in the show are pretty awful. Like, it is, again, pretty awful. Yeah, I think the only uh, yeah. one who kind of came, it's a bittersweet ending for him, but Wade Runner. Yeah. Yeah, well, well since it has, to, it kind of coincides with what we were talking about, because while all this was going on, Gilgamesh and Ryder were fighting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well. On Battle on the Bridge, yeah, 2000. Well, specify also, Ryder, was, he was a bit weaker than usual, because, you know, Saber took out, like, his main chariot. So you know, he only have like one horse left, and one use of his mar- of yeah, his, uh, yeah, one use of his, his uh, reality marble that literally like sends you back into his, you know, hit like out in the desert where you fight the Roman Empire. Yeah, sends yeah. you into because... <laughs> sends you in the desert where you got to fight all his goons. So like he wa- he already wasn't at full strength, and Gilgamesh was just like hilariously overpowered because he did basically least exertion throughout the entire series. Yeah, so he charges at him, does his little reality Marvel thing. Yeah, you know, man, they, get him! Ah! And then he's you know, like, he's doing his battle charge. Then you hear Waver doing like you know the cute little kid version of his yeah. battle charge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but actually, no. Before we probably should have talked about you know the uh, you know drunken speech they had with each other. Oh yeah, the the yeah, junkest speech. speech in the yeah, courtyard. Yeah, yeah, no, we're gonna I have to don't, go back I don't a want bit. to spoil everything. Uh, uh, not, well, I guess okay. we'll just save that. Well, right. we already said spoiler alert. Like yes. how many times in one sentence? We're already doing this, so we <laughs> might as well just leave some stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll give something yeah. the viewer should right, well, actually. Uh, look anyway, to. Right. the point is though, like, yeah, uh, Ryder Alexander the Great was pretty much like the only character Gilgamesh actually respected as a king in that show. So whenever they had interactions, it was always like a good, like a nice talk. Just yeah. good, good, good talk, bro. A nice conversation. I mean, you would think Gil- well, Gil- you later. like Gilgamesh is just being, you know, just your just, wine like, sucks. We're drinking the good stuff tonight. Yeah, just disgustingly pretentious and gold plated. Yeah, but there's like, no, you actually know how to be a king. I'm still gonna be pretentious and gold plated, but I, I still respect you. Say, you're a pretty cool king. So <laughs> yeah, when they go for the fight, it's like, all right, no, no more just throwing stuff. I gotta pull out the real sword now. Yeah. And boy, what a sword it is. Like, it's just this... Fucking... Like, fun like, Gilgamesh pulls out his Rubik's Cube Tron Lance. <laughs> Tron, wait, well, what? no, no, he, no, no. He pulls out... Rubik's like, Gate of Babylon, instead of pulling out a weapon, he pulls out a key, which is also a sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah before Kingdom Hearts. Shut up. <laughs> he uses that to unlock a Rubik's Cube, and then he pulls out his real sword, Ea, from, like, Babylonian creation myth or something. Yep. Which is a giant which, energy... Drill Lance 
thing. Basically, he just holds the thing out and reality <laughs> breaks. Basically. Yeah. So he just he just points the thing forward, and then Alexander the Great's uh, reality marble just collapses in on itself. If I remember correctly, I think that the I forget the name of the sword, but that is considered an anti-universe type noble phantasm. Yeah, (laughs) that is literally the type that it's like it's it's, identified as. Its main purpose is to break reality marbles. Yeah. Right. And so... Well, apparently, though, if you used it in real life, it would just destroy everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Gilgamesh, like, limits it on how much it can destroy every time he uses it. And so, the marble is gone, and they're back on the bridge, so Alexander the Great is rushing at him down the no, street. No, then besides... Uh, well, he was doing it before, you know, with Waver on, like, you know, riding behind him, and he realized, yeah, no, I'm, I'm about to die, but I'm a... I'm, I'm gonna so- go out like a G. You watch me. You're not allowed to die. You carry my legend throughout the ages. You hear me? You live. You live through this. All right, let's go. Exactly. As Waver just just tries to imitate him, but it's so nasally. <laughs> oh no! That... <laughs> that already happened. That already happened. Yeah, that no, was when no. they were in the chariot. Yeah, no. When he makes the last charge, yeah, he tells Waver like, "Get off him! Like, I'm I'm about to die right now, so you you don't want to be on this horse, pretty yeah. much." So the horse gets. Sl- so he's like, "Well, you're gonna be running at this uh, this wall of swords." So horse dies. First. Yeah. And he manages to get to Gilgamesh. So close. But chains. Yeah, just like an inch before having a sword actually touch yeah, him. And, and then Gilgamesh was Gilgamesh like, was like, well played. Nice job, guy. Good. GG. <laughs> and then he stabs him with a universe sword. Yep. Hmm. Finishes the job. But Waver lives. So yep. yeah. that's a plus. Oh, uh, yeah, he actually goes up to Waver. So, I mean... Aren't aren't you going to you know avenge your king? He's like, well, if I, well, his no, last I, orders for me were to live, so that's what we're gonna do. Well, Good boy. Oh no, specifically he says, well, well, if I fight you, I'll die. <laughs> obviously, yeah. <laughs> no, just just yep. I, I just love the way he said that. If I fight you, I'll die. Obviously. obviously. <laughs> but, duh. but yeah, no, like he was assigned to be Alexander the Great's retainer, so he has to stay alive to record his history. And Gilgamesh is like, yeah, no, kingly duties, I respect that. Good boy, see you later. Mind you, the rest of the series, Gilgamesh is just being a complete asshole, you know, just just like, you know, motivating people into murdering each other. Yep, but, but, like, but you now, guys, I like. <laughs> yeah, no, because like, everyone loves these guys, I guess besides his teacher. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who gets, who we already discussed gets thoroughly fucked. Karma's a gigantic bitch. I thought Ryder would have probably taken his teacher's shit either way. <laughs> I mean, honestly... Well, yeah, that's that's actually what he says in, be- in the beginning. Yeah. Like, oh, you were going to be the one to summon me? You're hiding in the corner. There's no way I was going to work with you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I guess as... For... I don't align myself with bitches. <laughs> I guess as for the two <laughs> other characters who are fighting, Kodomine and... Um, the... Well, Kuritsu. I was, was going to get to, you know, the rest of the deaths. Oh, the rest of the deaths. Okay. Wait, do you want to do that? I mean, I, I mean, again, I kind of want to leave some of this series to be, you know, like, okay, all right, never mind. a little yeah, more, right. since we're pretty much at the end, we might as well keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah so, and these two had probably the most, like, not even, like, impactful endings, let's say. <clears throat> Out of everybody. Because obviously they're the last two standing in this war, and they're still fighting, so, basically, um... From what I remember, um, Kir- Kir- uh, Kiritsugu gets the upper hand and ends up winning winning the Grail War, I believe? Well, he, yeah, he well, gets, he him, winning he gets him with that rib bullet. And yeah, because like, this ending is, like, crazy. He gets him with that rib bullet, fucks him up, and then Kiritsugu is like, I win, which means I get to get my wish. My wish is to just get rid of... He wanted all... to end all war. I want to end all war and just, just and stop then... evil. Is like, well... You're going to have to do it your way. <laughs> yeah, the Grail says, you know, I'm omnipotent, but I'm not omniscient. So, I can only do this in a way you understand. And tell him a story about how, you know, if there are two ships, one with 200 people, one with 300 people, you know, he'll easily sacrifice the 200 to save the 300. But what if the 200 ship captures you and demands that you fix their boat first? What do you do? You killed everyone on the boat. We know. We, we, we don't even explain it. That's what you do. But now, what was it? A, a boat with the, the, the... Sh- the ship that had 300, what if that one started to sink and it split into two other ships with 200 and 100 people? Yeah. 
And now what if the 100 ship captured you and said you had to save them? Yep. Like, and he's like, wait, no, that's not fair. Now I've just killed 300 people to save 200, but that's how your shit works. <laughs> that's how we're going to save the world. And, you know, zoom out. Basically, like, 90% of the world is going to die. Because <laughs> how else are you going to stop war? <laughs> so he decides, eh, m- maybe this isn't worth it. Like, this is kind of a terrible idea. Also, yeah. you might strangle your wife to death. <laughs> well, no, well... And then kill well, your daughter. Well, the Grail assumed the form of his wife and daughter by, I guess, metaphorically killing them. That was his way of rejecting the Grail. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mostly just so, you, you know, just more disturbing imagery of him, you know, murdering his family. Yeah. So it's like, and he walks out of the Grail universe and he's like, no, fuck this. Grail gotta go. Mm. Yep. Saber, blow up the Grail. <laughs> Saber, I'm using my two command cells to tell you to blow up the Grail. I don't want to do Why it. are you making me do this? I'm using my third one to then again tell you blow up the Grail. <laughs> well, actually, no, it, it was only two. He, he used the yeah, first one two. earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he used the first one. forgetting used the first one. Uh, 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 techn- technicalities, whatever. Yeah, he uses command seals, says... Blow up the grail. I dare you to blow so, up the grail. So, like, Saber, you know, she charges up her, you know, nuclear sword. Yeah. And swings at the grail. The grail breaks, but there's still, you know, like, blood wine dripping out of it. And then, you know, a giant hole in the sky appears. And then, like, <laughs> a, like a shit ton of it, but, like, with... But now it's, like, all muddy or something, falls out of the sky and just, like, starts destroying the whole city and starting fires everywhere. And he's like... Well, he and the viewer are collectively like, Whoa, what? what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> he he <laughs> tries to nuke the, nuke the grail and then fucking slime time live on the entire town. And then it's like, maybe you shouldn't blow up the grail. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, Whoops. maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> I didn't know that this was going to happen. I, I, Apparently they might explain this in like some of the other fate related I, stuff. I think... But watching fate zero and nothing else, I'm sitting there like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> what I want to believe is either this. A, actually trying to destroy the Grail will end up doing that, especially if you do it not properly. Or B, at the last second, Kodomine... Who kind was of, still alive. Who was still... And since... Uh, just actually, getting actually, conscious. Actually, no, I don't think he was still alive. It's just when no, they did when the slime him. came down, it brought him ba- and it, it brought him back to life. Hmm. As, and no, effectively gave... I think it showed him, like, him. opening his eyes as it was happening. Oh, was he? Yeah, I, think so. I think he was still like. I feel like at the time he was like, "Man, I, I wish that everything wouldn't go his way," and he didn't realize the Grail was still there. Like, and then nothing went his way. Or, and since the winner already rejected the Grail, it just went to the runner-up, and the runner-up's wish was like, "Fuck up everything." <laughs> For, was fuck this guy? It's honestly, like, what, the what, most what, likely. Like the thing this guy wants to happen, the opposite of that. Yeah. Which somehow translates to you know flaming mud. Blood, wine falling Lava. out of the sky and destroying the city. Yep. Yeah. Or a good chunk of it, at least. It's like, fuck, fuck, what's your wish? Fuck this well, guy. It was a fuck this guy so it was, it, was it, it was a pretty healthy chunk considering it just came absolutely the fuck out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, the old ladies, and the old guy and lady's house were a okay. So. Yep. And so <laughs> he's like, what have I done? And he's just wandering around, just. It, that was broken. a walk of just depravity. Broken, basically. <laughs> just no. digging through rubble. Somebody, yeah. please no. be alive. And then, like, Kieran Gilgamesh are just watching him, like, wow, look how sad that guy is. Fap, fap, fap. Also, Gilgamesh is naked. Yep. <laughs> well, the, oh, the kind okay. of explains is just like, <laughs> where did my clothes go? The slime just effectively brought him back to life. Yeah. Well, it gave him a... It gave him new life. Oh, it, it gave him a life outside of being a servant. He... Yeah. Yeah, he's no longer just like, you know, Kirei's stand. He's his own separate character that can walk around on his own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hey, look, I'm real now. <laughs> Which is probably the worst outcome that could possibly happen. And and I guess... The, oh, not really. Yeah. Gilgamesh doesn't really cause that much trouble. He's and, just a dick. And, and the very yeah. end... I mean, if that should happen to Castor, then that'd be a problem. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the very end basically teases for what's to come. And, uh, you know, of course, Fate uh, Unlimited Blade Works. Main character gets dug up out the rubble by uh, Shiro. Yeah, he's just looking around for any survivors of the fuck-up that is somehow his fault. And he digs up new main character. Yep. And, ba- and, and uh, you know, I mean, if, if there's any bright side, is that, hey, you know, he gets to... He gets another son, he gets to raise him. To, you know, maybe not fuck up like he did. Yeah. <laughs> right my wrongs. What happened to the little Goyle? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Not until the next season, anyway. Pretty much. Oh, uh, Sa- uh, Saber got covered in that slime, and she got sent back to Camelot. Yeah, she, 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 she basically. That Which cat. is just a heap of bodies. 
Yeah, yeah no, like the, the slime hit her, and she got like Super Smash Brothers KO'd back to Camelot. And then she further <laughs> remembered that she is a terrible king. She yep. was. So, yeah, that and also Rin and everybody are at um, you know her dad's funeral, and here's uh, Kotomine is like, I didn't do it. <laughs> well, he's like, he's pretty just much like returning reading. to the scene of the crime. Yeah. yeah. He's just reading off all like the dog. He well, is. I mean, he, yeah, he's he, oh, yeah, he, oh, he's he, reading off his eulogy in the Japanese version. He says it in English, which, and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just goes up to to Rin and the, Rin and her family, and just looks just looks at her suffering, and then decides to smile, like just like that little smirk that you might as well he might as well just like went underneath her chin, opened his mouth, and just stuck his tongue out for the tears. Just just put a goblet <laughs> under her chin. Just, just like, <laughs> it'll help your dad pass on. <laughs> Cry into this cup for me. <laughs> so that's basically it. He just discovered that the only thing he cares about is that he just loves seeing people suffer. Yep. <laughs> Waver moves on and does bigger, better things. He goes back to his not grandparents' house. Yep. Hangs out there for a while. Yep. And uh yeah. That's that's basically it. Everything leads into um Fate Stay Night. Which AKA gonna... Fate Unlimited works. Which we're, plate works. which we're gonna uh, watch yes. pretty soon. Actually. Pretty, is it done yet? It's it's the um, first half is done. It, the second half I'd, doesn't start. I'd April. rather watch it when it's done. Though. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna watch it. We're gonna watch it when it's done. Yeah. All right. So when it's done, we're just gonna marathon the whole thing. Yeah. 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 Sure. Just like we did with this one, pretty much. Once we finished Kabuto, we got right back on it. We finished it in like two sittings, by the way, pretty much, or three sittings even. Yeah. Well, it also wasn't that long. It yeah. wasn't. It's twenty six episodes. It's a good watch, you know. If you if you just want something good but not too long, very action packed and a gorgeous animation. Mm. I can't take that away. Yeah. Oh, oh, also, um, we didn't get to uh, Black Knight's death. It ends poorly. <laughs> I feel, I feel like, yeah, I feel like it wasn't worth talking about because it's kind no, of just. You know. uh, no, no I, I mean, as in, like, it's it's probably, like, the, the most tragic death out of all of them. Yeah. Like, it, it was tragic in its thematic ways, but I guess just how it went about, it was kind it's of... It's just... Eh. Why? And... Battery dead. <laughs> yeah, basically. So... I thought it was... I fucked your wife! Why aren't you mad at me? I don't remember the original series all that well, but I feel like I liked this one way better because I remember dropping and picking up the original a lot because I just was wavering in interest. Ha ha. Um, I watched the original and I don't really remember anything from it other than Unlimited Blade Works. I I mean, I keep hearing about the original, you know, like it's a classic, but... I guess it, maybe it might be a bit dated, just, you know, typical shonen fare. Yeah, especially considering it's based off of, like, the goody two-shoes rap from the visual novel. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Unlimited Blade Works, it's kind of going about on, a, like, a more edgier, like, darker approach. Kind of like in Fate Zero. Well, in Fate Zero, like, absolutely nothing went right. <laughs> <laughs> nothing went right. Actually, I think it's the same story from the previous anime. It's just... It's done with better writing and yeah. well, yes, generally like better Fate Zero has like no happy endings. And the like, movie that's coming out is going to be the bad end, the the bad yet badass end. Yeah. So with, uh, with Black Saber. So basically, if you're looking for a really good action fantasy series that also takes place in modern time, very interesting, very good. And know. if you ever wondered if King Arthur was a 16 year old girl, here you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Much. And I guess also. If you you probably like the series if you enjoyed a series like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because it's kind of a similar premise a little bit uh, like in forth. terms of just like basic idea it's like okay you have a spirit you have a spirit next to you and it fights with you wow so it's like I'd say it's more like chaotic rooms <laughs> <laughs> well I was gonna say like Pokemon with you know historical figures. <laughs> This is where we're going to end it now. Wacky, we enjoyed that you were on the show with us. Go check out Wacky Modder 84 on his channel. He does a bunch of uh, Gundam Yeah, we're helping videos. you. We're giving you all, all seven stuff. views. <laughs> oh, yeah, all seven views. No, what? I'm just going gonna... to add to your 1,500 plus subscribers. 10,000, by the way. Jesus. But seriously, though, <laughs> I'm just going to just send me the link to this shit, and I'm just going to put like a post. going to put up like. Something on my feet. If you wondered what my friends are like, this is it. Enjoy. (laughs) Excellent, excellent, excellent. This should be played at high volume.